Welcome to this uh, last part of the webinar. Thank you for your for being resilient and supporting us to, to up to the end. So we have two more presentations. The first one is about uh, RC jacking, um, and it will be presented by Eduardo Julio and me. Eduardo Julio is a full professor of structural concrete at the Instituto Superior Técnico of the University of Lisbon in Portugal. He is the head of CERIS, the largest Portuguese research center in civil engineering with more than 400 researchers. He plays an active role as a consultant in structural engineering, having delivered more than 100 specialized studies. He also served as the CEO of Fundistamo, a public company that runs the National Fund for the Rehabilitation of the Built Environment. He's an honorary live member of and fellow of FIB, member of COM4 and COM8, convener of Task Group 4.4 and the Task Group 8.1, and the head of GPBA, the Portuguese group of FIB. So, Eduardo, as soon as Thank you are. You and start our presentation, please. I'm going to present the guidelines. <clears throat> the case study will be presented by Eduardo Cavac, and so I'm, I'm going to present him now, not in the middle of the presentation, and then I will start. Eduardo Cavac is an assistant professor at the Civil Engineering Department of Nova University of Lisbon, where he teaches courses related to mechanics, dynamics, and structural safety. His research focus is on structural concrete, system reliability analysis, risk and robustness assessment, and life cycle analysis of building and bridges, which reflects his background as structural engineer in the bridge and special structures department of the Portuguese Road Authority, where he coordinated more than 30 strengthening and repair interventions on bridges and special uh, structures. This uh, presentation is about reinforced concrete jacking. Uh, this, this method is uh, very similar, is very similar to the concrete over overlay that this morning was presented by Norbert Randall. In fact, the only difference is that concrete overlay refers to building slabs or to uh, bridge decks, whereas uh, reinforced jacketing refers to uh, beams and columns that are encased by this overlay and therefore it looks like a jacket in this called reinforced concrete jacketing. Uh, this method has several advantages. Uh, I'm referring a few. So it is the stiffness is uniformly distributed, and that can be a, a positive aspect regarding foundation strengthening that sometimes can be avoided, contrary to what happens when you use shear walls or steel bracing added to facade frames. Uh, the needed know-how and equipment is very similar to the one needed for uh, the erection of new reinforced concrete structures. And uh, there is uh, an increase of both durability and fire resistance, contrary also to other strengthening methods. There is, of course, also disadvantages. That is the increase of the cross-section mainly in buildings that can be a problem. And also the fact that there is always disruption of occupancy and production of dust and debris. This method is adopted when uh, a, a significant increase in actual or uh, bending strength or stiffness is required. Uh, the materials, as I have referred to, are uh, almost the same as for new construction. Nevertheless, since the, the jacket has a reduced thickness, uh, usually it is adopted instead of a concrete, it's adopted a grout or a self-compacting concrete with a reduced maximum aggregate size. Shotcrete is also um, a good uh, option. <clears throat> Regarding the reinforcement, we can use ordinary carbon steel reinforcing bars as in new construction or in very 
aggressive environments, stainless steel or even GFRP rebars. To anchor, <coughs> sorry, to anchor this uh, reinforcement to the existing structure, uh, it is adopted a commercial bonding agent, typically epoxy-based resins. Uh, the techniques are mainly two. <coughs> Either we adopt a full jacketing, and this is the best and the most efficient uh, technique, uh, unfortunately, it can be only used in, in columns, in, in building inner columns, whereas in, in beams and in edge and corner columns, uh, we have to adopt a partial uh, jacketing. And of course, this poses uh, some problems that I will address uh, later on. Uh, sometimes when we are referring to uh, flexural strengthening, it is needed to provide continuity between floors in buildings and therefore we have to uh, drill holes to pass the reinforcing bars in the, in the slabs. If we are referring to flat slabs, uh, this will not cause any, any problem. If we are referring to slabs supported by beams, there are some uh, specific uh, aspects to be taken into account that I will address later. Uh, regarding the equipment, as I refer to, it's the equipment used in new construction. Apart from that, that you need to prepare the surface to fasten the rebars to existing um, to the existing structure and so on. One aspect that I will highlight later is the need to increase the roughness of the surface. Uh, for that, it is also very important to have equipment to measure this roughness. There are some roughness samples that can be used in a qualitative um, measurement of the roughness of the surface, but there are also more sophisticated methods that are, of course, more accurate, like uh, laser-based uh, roughness analyzer and other methods. Regarding the stakeholder roles and qualifications, as in uh, any other uh, strengthening method, the owner needs to provide or original plans and documentation of subsequent interventions and specify very well what are the goals and requirements of the intervention. The designer must have re the required qualifications and we think and we recommend that he also has experience in rehabilitation of concrete structures. The same applies to the contractor that must have background in rehabilitation of concrete structures and hold the experience and the equipment required for the uh, needed interventions. Some examples, uh, removing the deteriorated concrete layers or prepare the substrate, replacing and cleaning existing rebars, perform patch repair, um, anchoring new rebars and applying the new concrete layer. So this will uh, should be hold uh, by the contractor. Regarding the design, it should start first by assessing the existing conditions. So it is needed a structural survey. Uh, we should map the structural anomalies and identify and correct probable causes, characterize the reinforced concrete member to be strengthened, assess the, the um, the substrate condition, carbonation depth, chloride content if relevant, and so on, and uh, characterize the mechanical properties of concrete and also of reinforce, reinforcing bars. So it is needed sometimes to extract some samples and to analyze in the lab. And finally, we have to perform the structural assessment and then conduct the design. The design assumptions um, in fact, uh, it depends on the state of conservation of the structure. We can consider uh, in one hand uh, the total contribution of the original member, column or, or beam, 
uh, if it is in good state of conservation. And in the other hand, we may neglect completely the contribution of the existing member if it is in a very bad state of conservation. Of course, you can always consider uh, an intermediate uh, situation. It all depends on the um, specific structure. Then um, we have to take into account that in this, as in, a, in a, any other strengthening method, when the strengthening operation takes place, there is already a service load applied to the original member. And so sometimes or many times you don't need to uh, release that load from the structure, but in other situations it is needed. And in that case, you have to provide um, active shoring. To do that, it must be paid in attention that the costs are usually quite high and in some situations um, it is not possible to, to be performed. For instance, in bridges, in buildings, it's quite simple to have a, an active shoring, but in bridges, it can be um, not feasible to do that. Then the, the design procedure <clears throat> can be performed assuming a monolithic behavior of the strength reinforced concrete, concrete member but then uh, we can assume reduction coefficients that are called uh, monolithic coefficients. There is an uh, interesting work on this subject by our colleagues uh, from Greece, Lampropoulos, Stefan Dritus, and others. Um, <clears throat> then the, the, the approach can be performed also in a more uh, accurate way but that implies simulate quite well and estimate quite well the shear strength, the longitudinal shear strength between the jacket and the original column or beam. So this is particularly relevant in the case of partial jacketing. Uh, there are uh, several ways of doing that. As I have referred before, we can do it as a qualitative approach based on the type of surveys that we have and based on that estimate the relevant coefficients. Or we can measure the roughness and then determine those coefficients. To calculate the, the longitudinal shear strength, we can use the model code 2010 uh, in section uh, 6.3, it has uh, the most advanced design expression that is um, more advanced than the one in Eurocode 2, because it, it considers explicitly the three uh, resistant mechanisms, namely the mechanical interlock, friction, and dowel effect. Uh, after designing, detailing is also very important. All provisions concerning detailing of reinforced concrete beams and columns uh, apply. For that, you can again check the model code 2010. Regarding the longitudinal reinforcing bars, I would say that to distribute uh, uh, around the, the column, is the best, but as I mentioned before, in the case of slabs supported by beams, that might not be possible. And so we have to concentrate the rebars in the corners and bundle the rebars. There is no uh, significant disadvantages uh, in doing that. Uh, in what concerns the transversal reinforcement in the, in the jacket, it should be placed out of phase, it should be the double and placed out of phase in relation to the original columns links or beams stirrups, since it is proven it's the most effective uh, detailing procedure. Um, in uh, seismic regions, uh, it is particularly relevant to take into account to the prescription of Eurocode 8. And in this case, it is very important to apply those monolithic coefficients I have referred before. Regarding preparatory works, uh, a correct execution is very important. So all deteriorated material should be removed. 
The rebars should be cleaned. Of course, if they are heavily deteriorated, they have to be replaced. But in many cases, it's enough to, to clean the, the rebars. And then uh, it, it is possible to uh, apply the, the jacket. Even uh, if the column or beam to be strengthened is in good state of conservation, so if it, even it has no problem at all, it is most recommended to increase its roughness. Um, <clears throat> this uh, can be performed by hydro demolition. This is the best technique. But sandblasting, for instance, also give very good results, although having the disadvantage of the need to clean the, the, the sand after uh, the technique is applied. There are other methods, there are other techniques that can also be uh, adopted, for instance, light hammers, but jack hammers is uh, completely um, disapproved because they cause um, micro cracking at the substrate and that leads to lower interface strength. Uh, in the morning, someone asked about concrete overlay or perhaps about the shear walls, uh, but it was referring to the interface if bonding agents should be used. Okay, the, the, the answer is it is much better to increase the roughness than to use bonding agents. Bonding agents, in fact, increase the shear strength compared to a smooth interface, but compared to a rough interface, they do not increase the shear strength. So it's preferable to increase the roughness, and this way you increase the shear strength and you save money because the bonding agents, as you know, are expensive. Regarding <clears throat> the execution procedure, uh, we have to bond the longitudinal, to fasten the longitudinal rebars to the existing foundations or to the support in the case of beams. So we have to drill a hole and I uh, recommend that these uh, to be very well cleaned. There, are, there is equipment from some uh, um, manufacturers of bonding agents that are not efficient. So it is recommended to use uh, high pressure, hair pressure or water jet, and then let the, the hole dry and afterwards apply the bonding agent and fasten the uh, steel reinforcement. <clears throat> Regarding the uh, material, the concrete to be applied in the jacket. Uh, it, it usually it is used a uh, grout, but it can also be uh, used a self -com compacting um, uh, concrete. Uh, some recommendation has to do with the size of aggregates that should be small because you have very little space due to the reinforcing bars. Uh, you should also increase the durability, so it is recommended to use a silica film addition, and uh, it is also recommended to avoid or to reduce shrinkage, so an admixture, an SRA, uh, should be uh, adopted also. Finally, regarding quality control and monitoring, it is important <clears throat> before applying the jacket to check if the roughness of the concrete substrate is adequate according to what has been prescribed by the designer and also to check if the anchorage of the steel dowels is uh, well performed and so some pull-out tests have to, is recommended to be conducted and also to check if the bond between the new and old concrete layers is also adequate and according to what has been designed. So some pull-off tests are also uh, recommended. Regarding monitoring, it is always possible to bond some uh, steel gauges to the reinforcing bars of the jacket and of the original column and then perform load tests and, and also check later if everything is performing as expected. And now I ask uh, Eduardo to please present the case study.
Okay. So I'm going to present the case study. It's the Pedrogon Bridge over the Guadiana River in Alentejo, Portugal, that was built between 90, uh, 1978 and 1981, and it is under the administration of the Portuguese road authorities. The intervention I'm going to describe the respect to the strengthening and protection of the columns using the RC ejecting technique. A2P Consult was the company responsible for the design plans of the intervention, and Ramalho Rosa Cobertar was the contractor who performed the construction works between 2005 and 2006. So the Pedrogan Bridge in reinforced concrete has a total length of 371 meters between abutments, and it is supported on multiple uh, columns spaced apart as depicted here in the, in the figure. Two box sections with two, two and a half meters height form the bridge deck with a total width of 14 meters. The columns are settled on footings and were designed as two thin concrete blades distanced one meter and, and 30 centimeters uh, apart. Uh, these blades had a thickness of 60 centimeters prior to the intervention. The C35 uh, 45 concrete grade was originally used, as well as the S400 steel grade. Uh, during the service life of the structure, the environmental conditions have changed significantly. In the early 2000s, at downstream of the bridge, a new dam was constructed to give support to the main Alqueva dam localized upstream. The new Pedrogon Dam serves uh, also as a hydraulic battery, making it possible to pump water upstream uh, during periods of no electricity consumption, allowing the Alkeva hydroelectric power station to be able to operate reversibly. However, and uh, as a result of the dam construction, the bridge columns became submerged almost to its maximum height. So in order to access the impact of the reservoir's water on the bridge, the Portuguese road authorities decide to proceed with an inspection and structural assessment, in particular of the bridge columns, those which suffered the most significant changes in, in, the, in, in environmental conditions. Inspection works were carried out between 2004 and 2005, and the most concerning pathology was found to be the development of significant cracking in the columns, 0 0.4 to 0 0.5 millimeters. The cracks contain moisture and gels commonly observed in alkali silica reactions. The occurrence of these chemical reactions were confirmed by X-ray and petrographic analysis, which suggest, suggested the coarse aggregates and sand to be of siliceous sources. It was also found that the reactivity was still very high, since expansion strains of 200 to 500 time, times uh, 10 to minus 6 were recording during a, during a period of observation of only six months. In terms of mechanical properties, no significant reduction were observed from the compressive strength tests. However, much more significant reductions were detected, detected in the young models, which ranged from 30.6 GPAs to 20.7 GPAs, thus almost 50% uh, less than the expected. Finally, no significant active uh, alkali silica reactions were observed on the bridge deck. So considering that the reactivity was still very high, a very significant reduction of stiffness has already been observed. The occurring expens expensive reactions produce significant changes in the internal structure of concrete, which turns difficult to access their uh, load carrying capacity in the short term and long term and that the alkali silica reactions are difficult to control in this type of environment with direct contact with, wa with water. In view of the above, it was decided to protect and strengthen the bridge columns using RC jackets. In terms of strength, the jackets were designed to perform without the contribution of the existing columns. To ensure the protective role and limit the water ingress, a self-compacting concrete of reduced permeability and reduced water absorption was prescribed as well as a cement-based surface coating with acrylic polymers. Uh, let me say that a very interesting subject about uh, concrete protective coatings can be found in FIB Bulletin 102. In what concerns the aggregate selection, uh, this time solution sources were uh, excluded. 
Regarding the execution of the jackets, some tests were firstly performed, in particular those concerning the concrete workability, the slump flow and the funeral, and the climbing work was also tested. Uh, an acrylic window was installed on the form work to monitor uh, all the casting process. So the execution procedure consists into uh, the following ser series of work steps. Um, first, a repair of concrete on spots of corroded reinforcement. Then the surfaces was prepared using the wet sand blasting technique, which does not cause the, the, the referred micro cracking. Then the, uh, the execution of the interface connectors, the placement of the transversal and longitudinal reinforcing bars, the form work was settled and the concrete was cast. After the hardening process completed, the form work was raised and the, the, these steps were repeated again. Well, to monitor the performance of the jackets, to control the alkali silica expensive reactions, strain gauges and temperature sensors were installed in the, in, in the column, as we see here. Uh, the, the later, the, 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 the temperature sensors were important to correct the strains provided by the strain gauges. So after 14 years of surveillance and average deformation of circa uh, nine times 10 uh, to minus six, per year was observed. This is a uh, 50 to 100 times slower than the expansion rate observed prior to the, to the intervention. So, so we can say that the uh, RC jacket performed uh, as planned. So this, this, uh, this is the, 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 the end of, of the presentation. We are now uh, uh, able to, to, to answer uh, the questions from the audience. So uh, I see that we have here one question from Pedro Santos. Uh, when performing RC ejecting, how do you reinforce the splices? Uh, how, how do you reinforce the splices uh, in the joints? I don't know if Eduard, if you want to, to answer this. Um, can you can you be more specific? What what kind of uh, you are referring to? Lap splices. Uh, I'm not, I'm not fully understanding the question. Can you rephrase it? Perhaps you can, we can. Yes, I can, I can give the word to Pierre. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, my question is regarding lap splices. Uh, how, how do you reinforce them uh, when passing through the joint? Okay, okay. So um, the, the question is about the, the links in a column, uh, how we do it in uh, in the um, in the joint between the, the beam and the column, or in flat slabs between the slab and the, and the the column. Uh, you, you don't need to do that in uh, in uh, in the flat slabs, neither in in the in the beams that are crossing the, the so. In that um, section, concrete is well confined, so I think there is no need to do that. So you just have to to cross the slab. I'm referring to buildings, so you drill a hole and you pass the longitudinal rebars, and you bring the links of the jacket up to the slab, and on on top of that, from the bottom again to the top, and you you cast the the jacket uh, with the uh, windows that are open on the bottom and the middle, in the middle and on the top. Sometimes on the top you have to cast from the, the next floor, but there is no, no need to, to put um, links in the jacket in, in the region of the slab. I don't know if I answered your question, if, if this was the, the doubt or Pedro, Pedro, are you satisfied with the, with the answer? Yeah, uh, I only heard a bit because the, the sound is not working, but um, I'll see on the replay. <laughs> okay, uh, Edward said that the, in, the, in those regions, there is no need no, you to- can, You can email me if you want. I'll be happy to, to answer, you. okay? 